This is a lesson on rotational kinematics in the kinematics unit. It follows a lesson on the basics of circular motion, where we covered angular displacement, arc length, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. The first qualitatively different type of motion that we're going to cover with rotational kinematics is uniform circular motion, where the acceleration equals zero which means that we have motion in a circle at constant speed and we can focus simply on the equation of the angular displacement over the time, which is very similar to the linear version of it, velocity equals distance over time. Due to this constant speed, each rotation takes the same amount of time. And you may be familiar with the fact that we call this a period. The time for one rotation is the period and note that it's designated with a big T. That means period, big T for time, T for time. An associated quantity that we use to define motion is also called frequency. Frequency is related to the period with just an inverse property. Frequency is the number of rotations in one unit of time. If we divide this, then we get one on the bottom and some number on top. And that says how many rotations it went through in a certain amount of time. We can relate these then. Omega is the angular displacement over a period of time. For one period, I know that the object rotates through 2 pi radians. So I can get 2 pi radians over whatever period of time and that will give me the angular speed. If I note that frequency is 1 over the period, I can do a quick substitution and get 2 pi f. So I have this form for a uniform circular motion that relates the time it takes to the circular motion quantities. The problem we're going to practice these concepts on is the twirling a rock over the head problem. It says you are twirling a rock on a string over your head in a horizontal circle. And I provided us with a little sketch here. This is a horizontal circle, sort of looking at it from the side. The center of the motion is here, and the string is here with a radius r. The rock goes around in a circle at a constant speed. It says the rock makes one revolution every 1.5 seconds. A asks us to determine the angular speed of the rock. I'm going to note that omega is up here, the number of radians per period, so I can write that down. Uh, it seems to me that the quantity that they give us, one revolution every 1.5 seconds, that is the period. So I can simply write here 2 pi over the period, which is 1.5 seconds. This will be in radians per second. When I run this through the calculator, you get a nice, nice answer of 4.1888 radians per second. Very straightforward. The second part asks us, how long would the string need to be for the rock to move at 25 miles per hour at 15 miles per hour? Okay, so they've given us two speeds here. And we're asked for the length of the string, which means I need to relate it to the radius. When I look at omega, I can see that they're giving me a linear speed and I have my angular speed. And I know how to relate a linear speed to an angular speed with omega r. We can solve this equation for r and we get v over omega. I'm going to do this initially for 25 miles per hour. R of 25 will equal V, which is 25 miles per hour over the omega, which I am going to put in here 4.1888 radians per second. I have some units to deal with here. I have hours in the numerator and seconds in the denominator. So I'm going to convert from hours and put one hour is 3600 seconds in here and I'm going to end up with an answer then in miles. The seconds will cancel, the hours have already canceled and I'm left with over a mile over a radian. Remember radians are dimensionless in the presence of linear quantities so I will get miles out of here which is what I'm looking for, it's a radius. I definitely want a distance. 
but it seems like I'm not going to have a mile radius on my rock. So I'm going to convert this to smaller units so that my answer can make a little bit more sense when I get it. And I'm going to guess that this is in inches. Inches may be a better way to go. So one mile is 63,360 inches. When I calculate this quantity, run this through, I'm left with inches, and it will be 105 inches with some change in here, 227 inches. Okay, so 105 inches. If I divide by 12, that's a little over what? A little under 9 feet. So that's interesting, but it's pretty fast, 25 miles per hour, a 9-foot string. Okay, I'm seeing it. Okay, so let's solve for 15 miles per hour. I'm going to note the, the omega is the same for each one of them. So if I get this ratio V1 over R1 equals V2 over R2, I can solve for an R2 really quick if I know V1, V2, and R1. So I'm going to solve this for R2, which will be my second speed is 15 miles per hour. Solve for R2, and I will get V2 over V1 times R1. I get a ratio of the first radius. V2 is 15. V1 is 25. And then my first radius was 105 with the change here, 7. I'm going to note that I get something less than 105, which makes sense because a point more inside on a circle won't go as fast as a point on the outside of the circle. When you plug this through your calculator, you get 63.02536 inches. You can reduce these to two significant figures on either both of those 63 inches and you can put maybe 110 inches here and that would be the radii. And that's the first type of motion in rotational kinematics is when there's no angular acceleration. Of course the next consideration is when there's circular motion with a constant non-zero acceleration. And what is Clever is that the original kinematics equations, which we first learned about in one dimension, and then extended to two dimensions, remember in the x direction versus the y direction, they are also relevant in circular motion when there is rotation going on. And you may see that all of the accelerations in these equations have been replaced with an alpha, the angular acceleration, and all of the speeds have been replaced with an angular speed, omega. All of the displacements and positions have been replaced with angular displacements and angular positions. So in theory, it shouldn't be too hard if you already understand kinematics in linear motion you can do kinematics in circular motion. What I'm going to remind you here is these are all for a single dimension, one dimension here, here's the x dimension, here's the y dimension, here's a rotational dimension. Be sure to assign a coordinate system. It matters if you're speeding up or slowing down. Which direction are those vectors oriented to with one another? Are they lined up or they are opposing? So be sure to account for any positive and negative signs with a coordinate system. We're going to practice this on the grindstone problem, and I put the kinematics equations up here in rotation, and also I put a grindstone over here for us to draw on. A workshop grindstone has a radius of 7.5 centimeters and is set to rotate at 6,500 RPMs. Starting from rust, ooh, I'm going to note that, starting from rust, that means something, it takes 22 seconds to reach the speed. Assume the grindstone accelerates at a constant rate. Okay, so I can put up here an alpha that it's accelerating at a constant rate. And I'm going to note that these equations are relevant because there's an alpha in there. I'm going to assign a coordinate system and say that it is speeding up such that the omega final is also in the same direction as the acceleration. The initial omega, omega initial was zero, and the omega final is 6,500 RPMs. 
While I'm writing this down, I'm going to note that I want to get this out of RPMs and into radians per second in the SI. My time was given in a second, and they're asked to find an angular acceleration, and angular acceleration units is radians per second squared. So I'm going to move from revolutions per minute to radians per second. I will do this one revolution is 2 pi radians that will get rid of the revolutions and get me into radians. I will also note that I'm in per minute, so one minute is 60 seconds. That will get rid of the minutes on the bottom, and I will have seconds left in the denominator. When I multiply this through, I get 216.6 repeating radians per second. Another thing I'm going to note is the time period here. The delta t, or just a t value, is 22 seconds. I have all my information sort of encoded. I really haven't looked at what it's asking me yet. That's fine. I'll also write down the radius equals 7.5 centimeters. Part A asks, calculate the grindstone's angular acceleration. So when I'm looking at this, I have an initial and a final speed, I have a time period, and they're asking me for an ang angular acceleration. So anything that has time in it is relevant, but I don't know any displacements, so that all goes, and I'm left with just this equation here, omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. And this may feel familiar with the definition of alpha, it's the change in the angular speed over the time period. I end at 216.6 repeating. I start at zero over a 22 second time period. And when I calculate this, I will get a radians per second of 9.84 repeating, 84848484. And I'm gonna write down radians per second squared. Straightforward application of a rotational kinematics equation. We're gonna keep moving through this problem. Part B asks, determine the angular displacement of the grindstone at this time. So we want angular displacement. I'm going to note that that's the symbol for angular displacement. I have a lot of quantities known already, so maybe I'll look at the equation up here that might give me angular displacement super easy. And it seems like I like this equation. You might use another one, and it will get you there. Uh, delta theta, this is another one that would work perfectly. Um, actually, I'm going to use that one. Delta theta equals a half. My initial omega is zero. My final omega is 216.6 repeating. And the time period is 200, is 22. The last part here says, what is the linear speed of a point on the edge? Well, I remember how to find a linear speed. When I think about this, I have a, a velocity that's tangential at a point along there. And these two values are related to one another. The omega and the tangential speed are related to one another. Bt equals omega r. They ask for the linear speed, so I can just take the omega, 206.6 repeating, and multiply by the radius, which I have 7.5 centimeters. And I'll just multiply by that. I haven't converted it. I'll just leave it like that. This will give me a linear speed in centimeters per second. Remember, this will be in radians per second. When I multiply radians per second times a distance, a linear distance, the radians will reduce out. They're dimensionless, and I'm left with centimeters per second. And you get a nice round 1,625 centimeters per second. I'm not really familiar with that measurement. I know that's 16 meters in a second, okay? But I was curious and I went ahead and converted this and this is 36.35 miles per hour. So that's a pretty, um, I thought it'd be faster, but that's fine. 